Hey, Shalom Maki, I'm Yahweh Ba Shinao, Shai Ba Shemakaka Das Um, hey, just real quick, man. You know, um, I'm watching this video right here from the Elder Kazak from Mississippi Church. It says it's any day now. Let's do the work while we can. And uh, I'm a, I'm gonna go back and watch it later on and try to get some more. But the spirit just hit me, man, because uh, basically the elder was speaking on. Um, he went to Walmart and he went to uh, Whole Foods and he went to like uh, Kroger's or some other store in his area. And um, he knows that the shelves is empty, no toilet paper, no water. And I experienced the same thing today. You know, I just um, I got out of a class that I was taking. So, you know, throughout the whole week, I was pretty much busy, man. I was, you know, doing the smoothie thing, um, eating salads, eating a little bit of meat. You know, it's it's the Feast of Unleavened Bread right now, so I sure as hell ain't go, going to go get no um, Five Guys Burger or, some, or something like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, the point is, you know, my refrigerator was a little empty, so I was like, well, you know, I need to go to the store, get a little something for tonight, get my little daily bread, you feel me? So I went to Kroger. Uh, that's the spirit of 144 is watching. All praise to y'all by Shemel Shot. I went over here. <clears throat> I live in Atlanta, man. I live in Southwest Atlanta. All right, I'm not going to give you the exact location where I stay at, but I live in Southwest Atlanta. All right? And, you you know, that's that's where Jake stay at, man. You know what I'm saying? Jake stay at. You know, if you're talking about you living in Alpharetta or Roswell, Kennesaw, that's where a lot of Edomites, Sprinkle with a few Jakes live at. I live in Southwest Atlanta, okay? I went to the Kroger on a certain location in Southwest Atlanta. And Jake is just going off the chain. Soon, soon as I got there, I seen more cars than normal. Um, Jake, Jake, Jake. I was looking for the kale salad. You know what I'm saying? To make a kale salad. Jake, Jake took all the kale salad. I'm like, damn, Jake, don't eat no kale. You know, cause I use those for my smoothies and my um my salads. You know what I'm saying? Got to the tortilla section. You know, want some corn tortillas, cause I needed some more for the feast of unleavened bread. I can barely find those, all right? The flour tortillas is all taken off the shelf, no water. You know, all, all the di diapers and toilet papers off the ch off, off, off the shelf, man. So that's what the elder was speaking on, but the point is, don't panic. And um, the captain from our camp, Abba Baja, did a lesson on that, on basically don't panic, because <clears throat> that's based off of a deity back in the um, Greek-Roman world. And when you panic, man, you were basically... Giving reverence to another power, man. You know, so um, we're coming to some times, man, where, um, you know, our faith is going to be tested, man. All right. And like the elder was saying, man, he's talking about one experience with another elder. And he was like, man, man, F, F that, man. You're going to eat. And that's the title of it. We're going to eat, man. We are going to eat in that day, man. We're eating now. All right. What makes you think that we're not going to eat later, man? All right. So, um, I'm going to go to Matthew 6 and 24. I'm going to let the elder keep um, talking to the spirit. I suggest you watch that video. It says, um, Matthew 6 and 24, no man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the most high mammon. And you're starting to see that with these celebrities, man. They've already canceled the NBA the uh, Major League Baseball, the NHL, Major League Soccer, and all these celebrities that serve money, what are they doing now? They're, fr they're probably freaking out. LeBron James is probably somewhere in Los Angeles freaking the hell out because he can't play basketball and show the devil how good of a basketball player he is, man. So all you athletes and entertainers, man, there's going to be no work out here in Babylon according to um, Exodus 19 chapter. And a lot of you niggas watch this any goddamn ways, so you need to fucking get your head right. If you don't like my language, like the elder says, get off my channel, man. But a lot of you fucking niggas in the entertainment world, you watch our videos, and then you make you, you mock us, and you don't take into consideration. Now the Lord is just basically cutting off your paychecks. So all you James Hardens and LeBron James and Anthony Davises, them checks going to get cut short because you ain't playing. All right, We know you niggas got to be a certain quota out here, man. We're not stupid. So continuing on, it says, Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor yet for your body what you shall put on. It is not the life more than meat 
and the body more than raiment. Verse 26, Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are you not more, much more better than they? All right, you got pigeons, you got geese, you got different types of birds. Hell, even the eagle knows he's going to eat on a particular day. He doesn't know the calendar. He doesn't know it's March, Friday, March 13th. All right. Friday the 13th, according to these people out here in the world. So how much more us? We're, we're the ones that's in this faith, that's doing this for their families, you know, for their children. How much more us, man, that's doing the work? It says, which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you, that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. So even the richest man on the face of the earth was not arrayed like a lily. Wow. Verse 30, Wherefore, if the Most High so clothe the grass of the field, which is to, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? And that's what the elder was saying, man. And, um, you know, through the Spirit, you have to have a balance when it comes to this whole people going to the grocery store. You know, me, for example, I've been, you know, I had to take care of some business, you know, this week. And like I said, I've been kind of, I haven't been eating on the run, but I had a little here and there. You know what I'm saying? I haven't exactly just gone to no fast food joint or nothing like that. I went to a restaurant here and there that served, you know, food that had, you know, unleavened bread or no yeast at all. But, you know, personally, there has to be a balance because I'm looking at my refrigerator and there's nothing in there. So I had to go to Kroger today. To get a little something, and I'm going to have to go to the store tomorrow to get a little something more. But I'm not going to sit out here and spend my whole paycheck on no food like these people out here. If you go to Kroger, man, and and these people are freaking out, and our people don't know the dietary law. People out here buying shrimp, crab, and lobster, you know, pork, shrimp, you know what I'm saying? All these abominable foods that you're not supposed to eat. And then, and then the junk food that's, that's just really toxic for you, top ramen noodles, that's not going to save you in that day, man. All right? And I just had a Jake outside of my neighborhood trying to sell me crab legs for $70, man. All right? That's not how you're going to get by, by eating abominable foods, man. All right? But there is a balance, man. You have to know if you have to go to the store. The elder was saying, you, you got you to gotta live. You know what I'm saying? But... The whole point is not to um just go overboard with it. So you can't just be like, oh, we need to prep for in the next eight months. That's what Jake is talking about. You know, I heard plenty of conversations with Jake talking about, oh, I'm good for the next two weeks. These crackers got food for the next year. All right. And most of that is for the elect. If it's if it's not abominable food that these Edomites and these preppers have in these uh storehouses, it's for the elect, man, in that day, man. All right, not you, not you crackers, man. Not you goddamn devils, you you Edomites. All right, it's for the elect, man. So you know, you gotta have balance with that. You can't just be sitting here trying to just buy a month's worth of food, man. All right, you gotta have some faith, man. Verse thirty one. Therefore, take no thought, saying, "What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed." For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. And the Gentiles, which are the, the heathens, okay, in this particular chapter, all right, that the Edomites are prepping, you know, getting ready the next so-called year, they're prepping, they got underground bunkers, so to speak. And I read a report that a lot of these, um, bun these underground um, bunker guys, these preppers, they weren't even prepared for the coronavirus, so... Hey, that's the Lord putting a twist on this on the on the planet Earth right now, man. All right, the Lord uh, is pulling the okie doke on you guys. that thought it was cool to um just prep for uh, all hell breaking loose. You, you didn't prep for the coronavirus, bro. All right, verse thirty three. But seek ye first the kingdom of the Most High and His righteousness, until all these things and all these things shall be added unto you. All right, so we don't have to worry about that, man. 
You don't know how you don't know how the Lord is going to play this thing out, man. We don't know the day or the hour. We're, we're hastening the day, but who's to say the next two weeks? You know what I'm saying? It, it would be good. It'll be good to go to the store and everything's on shelf, and all these people don't even consider what happened two weeks ago. Because that was that's what happens in America. You know, people's bitching over Kobe Bryant dying. Now it's the coronavirus. You know, first it was the coronavirus, then Kobe Bryant dying. Now the coronavirus. Who's to say, you know, last year around this time, it was the government shutdown. And these people, went, they, people the, the, the Lord allowed these Edomites to shut the government back up. I mean, shut the government back open. They're allowed to open back up. And these Jakes got more proud. So who's to say, we don't know the day or the hour, but this is this prophecy is beautiful, man. Who's to say that the Lord won't um, uh, stop this coronavirus in the next month, two and two months, three months? And all this hysteria and panic will be over. But Jake will go back to being proud, man. All right? And these Edomites, man. Just how, like, in Exodus 9th chapter, how the Lord brought plagues upon Egypt. And Pharaoh got more proud after the plagues, man. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Lord just sent this coronavirus for the next two, three months. And then it's a so-called cure for it or everything goes back to normal and more of you people get proud. Okay? But us in the know how we, we know what's going down. We we know we know the setup, man. All right, so we just gotta keep doing the work, man, because you know there's gonna be a large grout gathering that's gonna um uh believe, man. All right, we have to be ready for that. All right. And what what, what man, that's the spirit, man. What did Yahweh Shah say Yahweh Shah say in uh John, um let me get this right quick. Uh John uh fourteen John 14 and 12, Very, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than shall these he do, because I go unto my Father. So who's to say, Yahweh shall fed a great multitude with a few loaves of fish and bread? So the Lord said, let me read that again. John 14 and 12, Verily, verily, truly, truly I say unto you, he that believeth on me, and you got a little Israel. You got a lot of. Let me just say this. Let me say this, man. I was on my day to day. I was watching a few videos, and you know this, these whole this Israelite gimmicks are still making rap songs in the time of this coronavirus. It goes to show you're not spiritually discerned in the times that we in, man. You got people in the world that's that's preparing themselves, but you got Israelite camps still making rap videos. All right. All right. It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And the only ones that's preaching his word is, is the men who have the uh, gospel from the apostles and elders of Great Millstone on down. All right. And like I said, a lot of these Israelite camps, they don't believe in Yahweh Shah. They just say Yahweh. All right. They don't believe in Yahweh Shah. Yahweh Shah is the reason why you're breathing right now. Okay, through his father, Yahweh. We can't go to Yahweh. We go through Yahweh Shai, man. He's the door. So if you believe in Yahweh Shai, and yes, we worship Yahweh Shai, he said that we're going to be doing greater works. So who knows if this coronavirus does go even further and there's no food out here, we're going to be doing miracles to provide food for those who believe. All right? That's the type of faith that you got to believe in the type of scenarios you got to put in your head as these days draw near. All right? So I'm gonna um, go to Isaiah. I'm gonna just try to close it out. The spirit got me reading the scripture. That's what it is, man. But I'm trying to close out on Isaiah. Isaiah 65. All right. And I'm gonna just go back and watch this video. I would suggest y'all brothers go back and watch this from the elder. You know, sometimes he be coming with these late night, uh, burning the midnight. Oh man, I I noticed the elder be coming with these late night lessons. One, two, three, four, five in the morning, man. This this elder be on fire, man. I mean, he's always on fire, man. But he be coming with them late night lessons. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, damn, spirit. The spirit is hitting this, this elder right here, man. So you know, <clears throat> I'm just get a couple more scriptures. Hey, man, the NBA is over, man. The NHL is over. You know, you Negroes want to see LeBron James dunk up a basketball court. The, the Lord is basically telling you, hey, look, man, I'm putting America on timeout. 
and I'm about to send more plagues to America. I'm, I'm taking away your basketball. I'm taking away your XFL. I'm taking away your MLB. I'm taking away your hockey for you so-called North Americans. All right, let's not, not, let's not forget about you so-called North American Indians, man. You need to wake up as well, along with you so-called Latinos, man. Okay, because Mother Mary and Jesus ain't helping you out right now, man. Mother Mary and Jesus ain't helping you out. Jesus Christos ain't helping you so-called Latinos out right now. Just like white Jesus ain't helping you Negroes out. And this whole coronavirus, you Negroes, West Indies and Haitians, you so-called black folks, you can get it as well. Because your boy, uh, the whole Utah Jazz team, which is a bunch of uh, Jakes, they got it. So all that we 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 ain't gonna we black folks we ain't gonna, I seen that in the grocery store today. It was like I was at the line, and the lady was like, she had seen the lady that the cash register work. She's like, oh girl, what's going on? Give me a hug. And then she was like, well I don't give you a hug. She was like, girl, I'm black. I ain't worried about that. A lot a lot a lot of the pride of you so called black folks, because the word black means sullen, dull, void of light. You have no light. So th therefore, two thirds of our people. Blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans are not going to turn into Yahweh Bashim Al Shai. They're going to pray to Jesus because you see it on social media. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the coronavirus. That, that, that is null and void, man. Okay? First of all, you got a bad diet. First of all, you're worshiping the wrong power. And second of all, you got a bad diet, man. You know? So this is for us, man. You know? This is why we put these lessons up. You know, it's to the point where you're not even making videos about two thirds, you're just warning them. You know, you can make a video about niggas and, man, look, this is for us, man. Those, this is in the know-how. These, these are spiritual briefings, man. And I'm sorry I'm a little bit excited, man, but the spirit just got up on me, man. I was watching the Elder video, and I was just thinking about the experience that I had today. I'm still kind of up late night, and I was just like, I'm just going to crank a lesson, you know what I'm saying, to the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And what's the title of this video, man? It says, it's any day now. Let's do the work while we can. Let's do the work while we can, man. If you got 10 minutes on your lunch break at work, man, crank up a lesson, man. You know, the apostles and elders, starting from Apostle Hart, said, do three lessons a week, man. That's 30 minutes, man. You telling me you ain't got 30 minutes out of seven days a week, 24 hours? You know what I'm saying? This is this is a light load. This is, this is a light thing, man. This is a light thing being this truth, man. We, we got the ticket, man. All we got to do is keep pushing the word and enduring and believe and have faith, man. Especially when there's going to be no food in these stores, man. And like I said earlier, I, I'm going to have to go to the store tomorrow. But I'm already preparing my head to be like, you know what? It might not be nothing there. Or you know what? It's going to be some food that Jake don't eat that's clean. You know what I'm saying? Jake, Jake don't eat. I'm going to go to the other Kroger, you know what I'm saying, see what's going on. But I'm thinking either there's not, there's not going to be any meat. And I'm already prepared to not eat meat because I've been doing that for a minute. And I'm prepared to just eat a plant-based diet. It's just, you know, the, the, these things through the spirit, like doing fast and staying away from meat sometimes and some drink, it's, it's what we're being prepared for. Isaiah 65 and 13, Therefore thus saith the Lord power, Behold, my servants shall eat. Who's the servants, man? Those are the doing the work, man. All right? And the ones that believe, man, but you shall be hungry. The ma the majority of these people, when there's no Kroger's or Health Foods or Wally's World, what the elder says, a.k.a. Walmart, they're going to be hungry. Behold, my servant shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servant shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. And you, through the spirit, you have to believe that a lot of these preppers, man, they, got, they showed in these movies, man, like The Rogue, you know. Purpose be having all this food and, and liquor and strong drink. All right, you're gonna be drink. You're gonna be drinking more than water in that day. You're gonna be drinking strong drink, liquor, all that good top shelf shit. You know what I'm saying? All that good top shelf shit, shit that you know cost the whole paycheck that these Edomites got. That's that's for us, man. But you should be ashamed. Two thirds of our people and these heathens that they follow upon are gonna be ashamed in that day, man. Especially Jake. Jake is trying to vote for Joe Biden. Jake is through. Jake is trying to vote for Joe Biden. Joe Biden is like fucking 108 years old. They're trusting in Egypt right now, man. All right? And the only way that Jake knows that they're storing up on food and food in the so-called black community at these stores 
is because of social media. So imagine social media being closed down that day. Jake is going to fucking lose their mind. Verse 14. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart. Because we're, we've been in the house of mourning for so long that it's going to turn around to you Jake's being in the house of mourning and we're in the house of feasting. Because we're going to eat and drink in that day. Okay, let's get that right quick, man. And this is going to be a scripture that's going to be posted a lot coming in these days, man. I just feel it. Just like Isaiah 33 and 6, you know, wisdom and knowledge will be the stability of that time. You know, roughly paraphrasing, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 7 and 2, I believe this scripture is going to be read out a lot as well. It said it's better to go to the house of mourning than go to the house of feasting. All you Jakes are talking about living my best life. All you black women that was living your best life, going over there to Europe. Hey, guess what? You can't go to Europe. And soon enough, you can't go to any country, man. So you black women out here, you Hispanic women, you Edomite women that are selling International Women's Month, you're sadly mistaken, man, because that Queen of Heaven feminism spirit is leading you to panic like the next man out here. It is better to go to the house of mourning than go to the house of feasting, for that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Because we're in the house of mourning. We know what's coming, but soon enough when all these perils come, and we're eating, we're gonna be joyful of heart, like it said in Isaiah 65. We're gonna be we're gonna be good, man. Alright, so don't worry about a few shells being empty at Kroger. What happens when there's no food out here and you you're in a bunker and you and your whole family eating good? Alright, or are you with another brother and y'all straight? Verse 3 Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sorrow, sadness of the countenance the heart is made better. All right, our mind, our heart, our mind is prepared, made be, be, prepared better in these days. We already, when we came into this truth, we know the race wars, the famine. Now we just see it. Now we're just preparing ourselves. We're sending up more prayers and supplications and asking the Lord to forgive us. You know, we're, we're rehearsing the righteous acts to the best of our ability, keeping the laws to the best of our ability. But what is Jake doing, man? Jake is getting more proud. And trying to sell you a, a crab and shrimp off the back of his truck. So back to Isaiah 65. I'm just going to close it on now. How long I've been going? About 22 minutes. And, um, you know, a lot of you Jakes, man, now that the NBA, you can't watch LeBron and LeBron, uh, AD or who the hell his name is, Kawhi Leonard, uh, Jimmy Butler, Trey Young, um, Giannis, whatever the hell is last name, that 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 Greek freak, whatever the fuck his name is, um, you can't watch these guys. Now the Lord has your undivided attention, cause that's all a nigga talk about. When I went to work today, Jake was not talking about the NBA, but on Sunday it was all oh, yeah, you know the Lakers Clippers game. You know what I'm saying? LeBron was going off. I think that was LeBron James' last game. It could be his last game, but then again, it could not be. All right, we don't know. We don't know the day, the hour. All right, when the Lord is coming back, but this could be the beginning of sorrows because, you know, I think a lot of brothers have seen that video from Davos 7 where a chariot is bigger than the planet Earth. So, hey, Yahweh could very well be on his way right now, okay, in his time frame, all right? The, the Lord's time is different than our time. So, excuse me for my rant. I'm just kind of hyped up in the spirit right now, but the whole point of the lesson is we're going to eat. We're going to eat Akim. Behold, my servant shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of the spirit. Because you ain't eating, man. Matter of fact, hey, man, I got to get this scripture right, kid. This, this scripture is going to be brought out a lot, too, which I feel through the spirit. You know, the elders still going in. You know, Lamentations chapter 4, um, verse 10. Why are you going to be in vexation of spirit? It says... Why are you gonna be vexed? Why are you gonna be sorrow in sorrow for most of our most of our people in these heathens? They that be slain with the sword are better than they that be slain with hunger, because that's an easy death. You you get punched with a sword or a gun, and you die quickly. But a famine, yeah, you're gonna you're gonna pine away. As a matter of fact, it says that. Continuing on, it says, for these pine away, stricken through, for want of the fruits of the field, you're gonna atrophy. Your body's gonna continue to get weak. To the point where you just die, man. It's going to be a slow, painful death. That's why you're going to be a vexation of spirit. Verse 10. The hands of the pitiful woman have sodden their own children. These women, especially the women of our nation, 
oh, I take care of my children, I love my children. Well, we'll see in that day. Because a lot of these women are going to sodden their children, bore their children. It says they were their meat in the destruction of the daughter of my people. And there's various scriptures in the Bible that talk about um, a famine. Read Second Ezra's, I mean, not Second Ezra, excuse me, brothers. Read Second Kings, the sixth chapter, man. So, hey, man, that's basically it, man. We going to eat in that day, man. All right, we coming to them times, man. Faith got to be on the thou wow, as Jake say out here, man. You know, don't let these situations that you see people panicking out doesn't give you the excuse to panic out and freak out. All right, we've been rehearsing the righteous acts. We've been doing the work for the one-third men, women, and children who believe. You've been getting these precepts. You've been changing your life. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody's not a prophet. But we've been doing the things that's required, and we've been asking the most high for mercy, man. So we're going to be good in that day. So with that, hey, shalom, Mike.